Uh, our next speaker is a, is a real star, uh, joining us all the way uh, from Germany. Uh, Professor Dr. Michael Braungart is CEO of the Environmental Protection and Encouragement Agency in Hamburg, Germany. EPEA is known as the cradle of cradle-to-cradle -cradle philosophy, gaining momentum uh, worldwide. He's professor at the Leuphana University, co-founder of the Madonna Braungart Design Chemistry, and founder of the Hamburger Environmental Institute. Uh, for decades, uh, Michael Braungart has pioneered the cradle-to-cradle -cradle design concept, which sits at the heart of the circular economy approach. Um, Hollywood star Brad Pitt, no less, promoted Braungart's Cradle to Cradle book, uh, which he co-wrote with US architect William McDonough. Uh, not a bad endorsement, eh? Um, so I'll be asking Michael all your questions at the end of this session, so make sure you get your questions up on Slido any time at all uh, throughout the next uh, 20 or so minutes. So a big round of applause for Michael Braungart. Good morning. Uh, thank you for this kind introduction. And, uh, but on the other side, you see, uh, when you get such a long introduction, you're getting older. Uh, uh, there will be a point where the introduction will be longer than my speech. So, uh, um, and, and by the way, cradle to cradle is not a religion, whatever, not a new religion which tells you what you should do. Um, and it doesn't save you from getting a divorce, which you could see with Brad Pitt. So. Um, <laughs> So I have a question first. Who is having an affair right now? <laughs> uh, just, just raise your hands. Come on. It's a small community. So uh, yeah, what happens in Auckland stays in Auckland, like people say. In there. Okay. So just raise your hands. Because I made a terrible mistake recently. I was in Austria, and there was a minister for economy coming by. He was sitting exactly there. Yeah. And, and he wanted to know whether Austria could become a cradle-to-cradle -cradle country. And, yeah, and I said, hey, it's not about sustainability. It's, yeah, sustainability is bloody boring, yeah. <laughs> so I said, dear minister, how is your relationship with your wife? Would you say uh, sustainable? Yeah. <laughs> then he stood up and he left, yeah. <laughs> and, and it was because the day before it was in, in, in the newspaper that he had an affair with his secretary. <laughs> And I didn't know that. So <laughs> this, this definitely means now I have to ask you first, because <laughs> statistically now at least 15 people should have raised ha their hands right now. <laughs> yeah. And this is a problem for me, because look, we have this, this difficulty with the environment, mostly because of efficiency gains, yeah? because we make our system more efficient. The plastic is more efficient, it's so lightweight, it's not worth to collect it anymore because we reduced the weight, we minimized, et cetera, with that. And, and, uh, and you can do this with any criminal, you know, whatever. Let's think about your mafia boss, and I said, I want to have it 10% cheaper. I said, OK. Yeah. I said, I want to have it 10% lighter. I said, OK. I want to have it 10% faster. I said, OK. Yeah. You can take any mafia person, and you can do business with that. But for innovation, you need trust. Yeah. And because I cannot trust you, because you're not honest, obviously, you, you'll, you'll get only my second best speech, because we cannot trust you. So innovation is built on trust, and, and it's about uh, how to make a difference with that. And I'm honored to be here at this place, because uh, I was with Greenpeace more than 30 years ago, uh, when the F French Secret Service bombed our ship here, and one of my friends died here. And, uh, and it was, a, and you could learn the bravest uh, uh, behaviors of people at that time. Yeah. And it was not about minimizing nuclear tests, yeah? but not about reducing nuclear tests, it was about stopping. Yeah? And the same attitude we need to do have for waste, because it's the same type of threat for humankind. And yeah, it was really nice to see that more than 30 years ago. I, I was here in 2010 last time, and, and, the, and we were much further at this time than we were today compared to the global discussion in that. And, and uh, for me, it, there happened a, a private tragedy. My son died in, 20, in 2013, and uh, after a 
a quite uh, simple surgery in hospital. He got in an infect and he died in, at the age of 24. And this is why I couldn't really be aware of things actively, promote things uh, for quite a lot of time. And people used to, to do circular economy. <laughs> uh, uh, circular term economy is quite stupid. Uh, it doesn't make sense because it's linear thinking in cycles. And this is bloody boring. Yeah, like, like, like London Eye, yeah, you can do it once, twice, <laughs> but that's it. And that's why it keeps you away from innovation. And I want to show you how we started with that. And, and sure, I want to talk to you about that this country can be, do more than minimizing waste to landfill. Yeah. This country can be far much, really stand up and make a difference. I'm here to say, why aren't we trying to become a cradle-to-cradle -cradle country, which is far more. It's not just minimizing waste. It's not about reducing. And I honor all these people from waste management, which are here as well with their efforts, but it's not about zero waste even, because when you think about zero waste, you still think about waste. Yeah. When I tell you don't think about a pink elephant, you think about a pink elephant. Yeah. Don't think about Donald Trump naked, yeah. you think about <laughs> Donald Trump naked. So you think, about, you think about everything being beneficial. And with this great tradition of the native population here, they know about it. Yeah, you can talk to them. It's about being supportive, not being a little less bad. Yeah? Being good instead of less bad. We think it's environmental protection when we minimize damage, when we reduce the amount of waste, but we are not protecting, we are only minimizing damage. It's like if you beat your child only five times instead of ten times, you are not protecting your child. Yeah? And in this logic, a country like Poland has been protecting the environment so much better than the whole New Zealand just by inefficiency. So don't make the wrong things perfect, otherwise they're just perfectly wrong. Yeah. And in this logic, it's about, uh, let's look at things which really matter. Yeah. Yeah. And what you see here, yeah, as well, New Zealand has a massive erosion problem. Not that much like the United States, not that much like uh, Africa. But in the last 200 years, we lost uh, half of the, of the topsoil in most of our countries. Yeah. We lost the size of China and the size of the United States as agricultural land. Yeah? The size, the whole space yeah, with that. And so what does it help us to minimize, to reduce, to avoid? We only optimize the existing and it's wrong. Like you said it from the beginning, we need to change in the system. And sure, we are at limits here. You can buy vegetables in Europe, in Vienna, in Paris, in Hamburg. And, and these vegetables are so highly contaminated that the compost cannot go into agriculture anymore. Yeah. Because there is not a, any reasonable limit for artificial fertilizer. There's much more radioactivity going into the environment than it's ever used <coughs> in any nuclear power plant or in any nuclear weapon. Yeah. Just in the last 15 years, we put 20,000 tons of uranium on our agricultural land in Europe. Yeah as a contamination of the fertilizer. It makes leukemia for children. <coughs> so um, does it make sense to, to donate stem cells for children when they suffer from leukemia? Uh, sure, <coughs> but this is only repairing the damage. Yeah. Let's think about making systems which are healthy in itself. We are growing corn to do, <laughs> yeah, to do biofuels. And look, at a certain point, Donald Trump is a more honest liar than we are. Yeah. Because he tells you clearly, I don't do anything. And <laughs> I don't tell you the truth anyway, so then we know where we are. But we pretend to do things. Europe uses 21% of the agricultural land to grow uh, biofuels. Yeah. This is ridiculous. At the same time, Europe is importing the size of France, of corn and soy, just to feed our farm animals. This is perverse. When you grow corn in Europe, you lose between 11 and 30 tons of topsoil per hectare in a year. Yeah? So the carbon is in soil, not in oil. Yeah? The main biggest single source is it's here is carbon in soil. And we deplete the soil to, <laughs> to do biofuels. This is perverse. Yeah? And I can give you more example. One, one, hectare, one hectare of rainforest has about 7,000 tons of carbon in it. One hectare of palm oil plantation has, has 60 tons of carbon in it. And we are importing in Europe 3 million tons of palm oil to make biodiesel. 
Yeah? Then I talked to Mr. Barroso from the European Commission and he says, oh, Professor Browngard, we get your message. We will only use certified palm oil in the future. <laughs> certified palm oil? Yeah, sustainable palm oil? No, palm oil can be used and should be used for food, but not for biofuel. Yeah? This is ridiculous. It only keeps us busy. Yeah? And it's like you would say, oh, I have to be in Wellington tonight. Yeah? Like Barbara, yeah, Barbara, where you are? Yeah. Barbara, who runs the show basically, with, and I'm thankful for inviting me and getting me here, um, uh, from, from ThinkStep, and we yesterday signed a partnership agreement with ThinkStep for that. Uh, but uh, yeah, if I say, oh, I have to be in Wellington, and I'm just walking, <laughs> she will be never there in time. Yeah. And you better stay here and have a nice party. Yeah. So I want to show you something which is important and which you can learn from the native people here. It's not about romanticizing nature. Yeah? We talk about Mother Earth, but there is no Mother Earth. The strongest carcinogens are still natural chemicals. Nature needs cancer to adjust the gene pool. Yeah? So mutagenicity is, is a disaster for you as an individual, but for the, for the collective it's essential. Yeah? Uh, so which mother would give cancer to her child? Think about the most perverse chemist in the world. Still, they are not able to make stuff which is as toxic as nature can do. Yeah. So the toxic substances of nature are at least one million times more toxic than what we can do as chemical weapons. So mother nature? No. <laughs> it, it, nature is our partner, our teacher. Yeah. But no, not our mother, because when you are romanticizing nature, we always apologize for being here. You can see it, that people like to eat organic food, yeah? and you do this, and I see it everywhere walking around here. But can you imagine, there's not one organic label which allows that my own nutrients can go back. It's only organic without me. Yeah? So every day I need to pick up two grams of phosphorus, yeah, just to have bones and teeth and store energy in my body, every day I need to release it to the environment. There's not one organic label yeah, in the whole world which allows that my own nutrients can go back. Yeah. We feel so terrible to be here that we think it's only organic when we are not involved. Yeah. But just by that we are too many, because phosphorus is far more rare than oil, and as I said, it's heavily contaminated. Yeah. So not only with radioactivity, but with heavy metals, with cadmium, with lead, with mercury, it's all these toxic elements. So why don't we do a new organic here in New Zealand and that we do an organic where we recover our nutrients. It doesn't mean to put sewage sludge in agriculture because we have all these uh, medical substances and also contamination in there, but we need to recover phosphorus. Yeah? We need to recover magnesium and sodium and uh, potassium and all these rare elements as well, yeah? which we just now lose right now. Yeah. So why don't see, see, see New Zealand as a country of the new organic, yeah? based on the, the, the native population thinking, yeah? connected with our wisdom and our knowledge. I want to show you things when you are romanticizing nature. Yeah? This is the off-casing of a carpet. Yeah? Indoor air quality in a building is about three to eight times worse than outside air. Asthma as well here as I learned is the most relevant children, children's disease now. Yeah, because we are now sealing buildings to save energy instead of first saying what is healthy air in the building. Yeah. So I put things in glass boxes and look what is off-gazing, yeah, what comes out from there. And each peak is one chemical here. And these carpets are relatively clean compared to children's toys. Yeah. Yeah. European Union is building uh, toxic substances in children's toys. Yeah. It's, instead of 39 chemicals, we are now banning uh, 64 chemicals. But just in Mattel toys, I find 10 times more toxic stuff. Yeah? So it only keeps us busy. It's type of, a type of ecologism, which doesn't help the ecology, only keeps us busy. Yeah? Like socialism was never social, actually, in, in Eastern Europe. Yeah? It's the same thing. But here I want to show you something differently. Here you see a carpet made out of wool yeah? from New Zealand. Yeah? And it says, oh, this is 100% wool. <laughs> yeah? but there are far more peaks. Yeah? And these are not wool peaks, yeah? these are chemicals, very nasty chemicals, at least in dozens of them which are highly mutagenic or carcinogenic. Yeah? And we said it's 100% wool, but it's not wool actually, it's Teflon. Yeah? Because we need to make our carpet uh, red wine resistant. 
and God didn't design the sheep to be a carpet and to be red wine resistant. Yeah. So we need to use natural materials for natural purposes. If we try to make a wool into a carpet, this is only some wool inside. Yeah. You never get in touch with the wool. It doesn't matter. But we said, oh, we want to have a natural material. But we need to use the material in the design, what you can learn with David here as well, in a natural context. Yeah. Here, the fastest growing peaks are the ones which we find in, in, in flame retardants. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we find in human milk 2,800 chemicals yeah, which are <laughs> accumulating. Yeah. And there's not one sample in the last 31 years which I have been testing which would allow that you could uh, sell this muscle's milk as drinking milk. Not one. Yeah. And some of the legal limits are exceeded for several hundred times. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. did the baby ask for the stuff? Yeah. So, one third of the chemicals come from building materials. Yeah. So, why don't we say, hey, New Zealand wants to be the country of healthy muscle milk. Yeah. And I can tell you, um, oh, still, that there is no doubt. Yeah, first of all, even if your child, child might suffer and die, I'm thankful for my child. Yeah. So, I always uh, want to tell you, uh, really, uh, when you have the chance to have a child, yeah, uh, you should have a child. And it's much nicer than you can ever imagine. And I, in my age, I have a lot of colleagues and friends who missed the time yeah, in that because they postponed it. They always thought their career is more relevant. And as well, we are uh, exaggerating our own skills. Yeah. And we are thinking all we are so special. Yeah. But we are not that special. Yeah. So you wait for Mr. Perfect or Mr. Mrs. Perfect to come. Yeah. But you are not that perfect as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and so, he, he, and, and as well, when you have a baby, you should, and, uh, you should always breastfeed that baby because a mother can detoxify herself by that elegantly. With one baby, you lose one third of your body load. Yeah. It's the best detox program you can have. <laughs> this is why it's good to have always three children yeah, with that. Yeah. Uh, but it's not scientifically accurate because it's only one third of the remaining always, so it needs a longer line of babies for that. Um, but on the other side, it's as well good for the baby, better than any Nestle milk powder, uh, but only for a maximum of nine months. Because to being scientifically accurate, the liver and the kidneys are not functioning first with the baby, so all the stuff is just flushing through. It doesn't get metabolized. But after nine months, the liver and the kidneys are functioning perfectly, and then the stuff get, becomes chemical harassment for the baby. And I think we should stop that. Yeah? <laughs> so not like people in esoteric areas, yeah, breastfeeding babies for two, three years, that's really not fair. It might be fun for the mother, but it's not fair. Yeah? <laughs> so, uh, so this is where we are. Yeah? We are just trying to minimize being bad, re to reduce, to avoid. And in, in, this is in Vietnam. In, Ho Chi Minh City, yeah. how do you get m more out of the same resource to be more efficient? Yeah. When I was a child, a cow was producing 5,000 liters of milk yeah, a year. I thought this is a lot. Today, we are up to 20,000. I'm teaching in Rotterdam. Shall I squeeze another 1,000 liters out of this poor cow just to be more efficient? Shall I breed another, add another pair of legs? There are 300,000 consultants doing efficiency. That's why join think that they are not promoting efficiency, they are promoting effectiveness. Yeah. Think about, hey, what is the right thing instead of optimizing the existing stuff? Yeah. And this is a different thing. The question is, what is healthy nutrition? Not how can I add another pair of legs to this poor sheep? Yeah. So this is why it's not the end of life. And even, I have to tell you, it's not about life cycle anymore. Because Really, people do life cycle assessment of such a monitor. Did you ever see life in such a monitor? Yeah. It's such a lack of respect for real life when you project life in dead <coughs> things. Yeah. Even my students do uh, life cycle assessments of a Coca-Cola can. <laughs> Did you ever see life in a Coca-Cola can? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it's a traditional take, make, waste thing. And if we reduce, avoid, minimize, yeah, it only kills the planet more profoundly. Because when we have a quick collapse of our planet, the planet can recover from the niches. When we only slow down the destruction, we do reach exactly the opposite, because the niches will die as well. Yeah? So 
just to be a little less bad doesn't really help us. And I have been fighting for the circular economy people to get the message. Yeah. And even I was not really able to actively do this. This is how they started. They said, oh, yeah, okay, Professor Prongard, we get your message it's about biological materials and technical materials. No, it's not. And that, okay, because if we want to look at it a little more like a butterfly, we add the landfill and the energy recovery here. Yeah. And oh, no, please, it's not like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so I said, okay, then it was the second one. It, it was this already the third one. It, now it says the stock management and it still minimize systematic leakage of negative external lipids. Yeah, so. <sighs> Okay, <laughs> so they try their best, okay, but, but it's not circular, it's a different thing. Okay, that's the third version. You see there is no you know, uh, legs anymore. The idea is that things become nutrients, yeah. either for the biosphere or the technosphere. There's no thing like waste. We are the only species in the world who make waste. Why should we be more stupid than all the other ones? Yeah. Yeah. So why is our brain keeping us away to be as intelligent as a simple termite? Yeah? This is amazing. Yeah? So can't we learn that everything becomes a nutrient? And sure, we only do not only want to live like an, an ant or termite. We want to have computers and washing machines. This is why there are biological nutrients and technical nutrients. Yeah? And this is why there are services and consumption and service. Yeah? So it's starting, but it's, and the circular economy is misleading. It's linear thinking in cycles. Yeah? A digital world doesn't need linear thinking. Yeah? It's a different mindset. And it needs a complete different idea for that. Look, we, we have 41 rare elements in a mobile phone, and we are re recovering nine of them, parts of them. Yeah? With that, yes, and we call it recycling. Yeah? My God, Donald Trump is so much more honest than we are. Yeah? <laughs> So we have 40 alloys in a car, steel alloys, <laughs> and what we do with it, we make building steel out of it. <laughs> How sick! <laughs> and, and we do this as rational people. Yeah. So why don't you say, okay, our country is the first country with healthy human milk? Yeah, because that would change a lot. Our country is which uses steel really in a way that we recover nickel cobalt, manganese, molybdenum, chromium, copper, titanium, and all the stuff, it all gets lost. It's nice to look at banning plastic bags, yeah? Okay, it's nice if we learn about things, it's good. Uh, but does it really help us? There's a, a, a copper mill in Hamburg, Germany, just one, yeah? They make four times more waste by making copper than all the municipal waste of whole Europe, just by making copper, yeah? So it keeps us busy somehow. The way to hell is paved with good intentions. Yeah. So the municipal waste is less than 5% of the whole waste stream. Yeah. So how can we do so? And we call it recycling. If you would say, hey, in all this building, the steel which we have is only iron and carbon. It's, it's just simple in that. That, hey, we are not importing any steel and we are strengthening our own steel industry that our building steel is only made out of carbon and iron. Yeah. Right now, it's diluted in the building steel, and we lose all these rare elements. Isn't it possible for politics yeah, to say, hey, we are a country. We want to be a cradle-to-cradle -cradle country. We don't want to lose these rare elements. Yeah. Then you make a difference. And sure, it has severe consequences. And as you know, you have the risk of earthquakes here as well. I was in 99. I was in Turkey, and I just analyzed the Italian bridge, which came down. Yeah, and they have high concentrations of copper in it. And when copper concentration gets higher, zero, higher than 0.5 percent, the seal breaks like an osteoporosis bone, gets quite brittle. Yeah? So there were, in the strength of the earthquake was only 4.6. Yeah? Yeah? And there are 20,000 people died there. And in this year, Turkey was importing 7 million cars from the United States you know, to make vehicles, uh, vehicles into building steel. In the Western Europe, we are diluting the steel to get the concentration down to, to less than 0.5%. But they, one-to-one, -to -one took the, build, the vehicles. And because in the United States, it's illegal to make building steel out of vehicle steel uh, because of earthquake risks in San Francisco. This is why the states are shipping the cars to other countries. And it, it was really one of the worst things you can imagine. It was like big hamburgers, yeah? One layer of human meat, one layer of concrete, basically. So 
we have a lot of these things. Why don't we say, hey, we have a country which it has, it, it takes care of the diapers. 20% of the waste stream of Auckland are diapers of the remaining waste stream. Yeah? <laughs> and it, there's some positive news in it. Yeah? So um, if you, um, yeah, Hegel would have said, a philosopher in Europe would have said, life happens between two diaper faces. Yeah? <laughs> Yeah, so you can now choose whether you're in the post diaper phase or in the pre diaper phase, depending. And it, the good news is the volume of adult diapers is already bigger than of baby diapers. Yeah, so there's some future in it. Yeah, so, so this mountain is just from one year. Yeah, one year. A baby takes five thousand diapers. Yeah. Could we come up with something differently? Let's discuss it later. So the key question is: Are we too many people? Yeah, and then you see, hey, because what we do now, we say, oh, overpopulation. But this is when you question the existence of people, they become greedy. Yeah? Because they said, hey, it would be better if you would not exist. <laughs> then you said, hey, before you grab it, I take it. Yeah? Uh, because normally people are friendly and sharing when they feel safe. But when you question their existence, we see this in Israel, yeah? even you don't know whether you survive, you enter a bus or a restaurant, yeah? people become greedy and angry. Yeah? Under stress, 95% of us misbehave, including me. Yeah. So I can tell you, for example, when you're on a highway in the Netherlands yeah, and you're switching the lane, yeah, you're causing, causing uh, 200 times more delay for the people behind you than you can gain as an average. Yeah. But you don't care because you're under stress. And it's the same for me when I'm too late coming from Hamburg, Germany into Rotterdam yeah, and, uh, and I'm too late for my my uh, seminar, then yeah, I'm switching the lane yeah, <laughs> because I'm late. Yeah. So under stress we misbehave. So let's make systems where we can feel safe and be, feel accepted. And so we are not too many. Look at the biomass of ants. Yeah, it's about four times bigger than of humans. And, and because these ants don't um, uh, yeah, take elevators, yeah, you can minimize your carbon f footprint when you take an elevator by five times because our perverse agriculture needs 10 calories for can one calorie of food. Yeah? If you take the same performance in a, in, with an elevator, it only takes two calories. Yeah? So you can minimize your carbon footprint by five times. But these pigs never take elevators. Yeah? They do working much harder physically than we do. Yeah? So they're equal in their calorie consumption, 30 billion people. So we are not too many, we're just too stupid. Yeah? We're not good enough. Yeah? So, and by the way, when you take the elevator, it's not only good for the environment, it, you die a little earlier, you can minimize your carbon footprint yeah. even more. Yeah? <laughs> so, in that logic. So we are not too many, we're just too stupid. Yeah? We could easily feed 20 billion people if you want. But this is where the politics are. You could hear it with our honorable minister. It's about reducing, avoiding, minimizing. Yeah? Guilt management. It has to do with our religion. It says you are evil, and for you it might be true. Yeah, and only God can redeem you. So you can be only less bad. You cannot be good. You can only minimize damage. Yeah, it, you could hear it. It was minimizing impact. No, we want these ants. They are not minimizing impact only because of them. Yeah, we have the rainforest. Yeah, only because because they process nutrients back. Yeah, so it's about a positive agenda. And by the way, this one tells you. If please don't buy it. Do you really need it? Yeah. Could you wait another year? So you force yourself out of business. Yeah. No, I think, hey, why don't we agree where we want to be in 2030? And then even buying things becomes a good thing. You can say, hey, wait a minute, I'm not really that good. I'm here yeah, and have a long way to go. But here, the more you buy from me, the faster I can grow. Yeah. The faster I can change it. But it's not about what you want to grow, it's about quality of growth. Yeah? And then, but your customer is not perfect, you're not perfect. So, but your customer becomes your change agent, not by minimizing, reducing, avoiding. You're only perpetuating this existing thing yeah, when you just reduce your existing uh, footprint. So, it, it, there's no misunderstanding. It's not about uh, being stupid. Yeah. Definitely, it makes sense to reduce the use of fossil materials. Yeah. But that's only part of it. We need to learn to make it big footprint, but make it a wetland, a beneficial footprint, not to minimize the damage, just because for that we are too many, for being less bad. So it's about positive impacts. Yeah. We need to learn to be good for the others, not just a little less bad. Yeah. It's about, look at this tree, 
no reduction, no avoidance. I will show a little video about it. This tree is completely inefficient but very effective. So it uses the right energy sources and it celebrates diversity because only diverse systems are stable and self-supporting. Yeah? So everything becomes a nutrient. This is how I started 10 years ago. I left this slide in here. Yeah, here. But it's not about sustainability, true. Innovation is never sustainable. Now we talk about disruptive innovation, but disruptive means not sustainable, isn't it? Yeah. So we talk about system change, but system change is not sustainable <laughs> because it changes the thing. So it's about purity. Yeah. It is why what David is doing is so magnificent and so beautiful. It's really holistic quality, a product which makes children ill, yeah, and which adds up in human milk, which adds up in the landfill, which becomes waste, just as a quality problem. So think it from a holistic quality perspective. That's enough. It's quality, innovation and beauty. The mobile phone was not sustainable for the ones who had stationary phones before. Yeah. So let's talk about different things. And here is my colleagues to just show, change show the Look at, at a cherry tree in spring. No reduction, no avoidance, <laughs> no minimization. But all the materials are beneficial. The cherry tree only makes a handful of cherries, actually, but with hundreds of blossoms. And all the materials are designed to go back into the biological system. I think we're not too many. It depends what those nine billion people are doing. <laughs> The cherry tree makes soil, makes oxygen, cleans the air. It's not toxic, it's not dangerous. No, it's the opposite. It's all nutrition. And what we do, we make the wrong things perfect, and then they are perfectly wrong. If you think about our ants and termites, there's four times as many, but they don't cause the problems because they produce nutrients and not waste. They convert biomass into nutrients, so why shouldn't we be able to do the same? Cradle to Cradle divides products into two spheres, a technical and a biological one. We have to redesign products. On the technical side, we have materials such as metals that can be used forever, like in chairs and washing machines. The biological side, we have products that dissolve back into nature, like cosmetics or the natural fiber textiles. If these two spheres stay separate, the concept of waste will be obsolete. So instead of reducing our footprint, let's rethink for a positive footprint. Cradle Cradle now becomes a friendly tsunami. Yeah. And hundreds and hundreds of young designers are doing Cradle to Cradle now. I want that the money I give for a product brings positive impact for the society. I'm optimistic because I think everything is going in that direction. It's never too late to stop to make stupid things. Yeah, <laughs> so, this is about innovation. It's really using 40 years of blame and shame as an innovation opportunity. Yeah, and it's a different mindset, but I only showed you the video because we have the sustainable salons here. And I want to show that you can have, get, I can have a haircut in time sometimes as well. <laughs> and it minimizes the footprint. Compared to your hair, for example, the, uh, a, a, a neo-Nazi saves 7,000 liters of warm water by being bold. So, so you can do something to minimize <laughs> yeah, your water consumption, etc. to do so. So make everything beneficial. Make it supportive with the biosphere or the technosphere. I want to give you some examples. So why don't you make just this country the country of healthy toilet paper? Yeah. Sounds strange, but with one kilogram of toilet paper, you're contaminating at least a minimum of 1.2 million liters of water because no chemical in toilet paper ever has been invented to go to the biosphere. Yeah. So the same is what you can do with, with, with paper towels and in, in napkins and things like that. Yeah. When you are doing a hike yeah, to, through nature, yeah, yeah, we find all this white stuff here because leave, people leave their uh, excrements behind and this in, yeah, lasts at least for three years in the environment. Yeah. When it's, a, a napkin from a cruise ship goes into the ocean, it stays there for six months because it's plastic inside. It's a, a plastic which stabilizes a wetness stabilizer that doesn't disintegrate. And it's taken up by a turtle like a jellyfish and it dies of paper, the turtle, not of plastic. Yeah? Yeah. So why don't we make the first paper towels here designed for the biosphere? Real innovation. 
yeah? make the, the, the country an innovation engine for the world. But don't try to do everything a little bit, yeah? just to be a little best. No, be leaders in that field. And we can show that it's possible. Why don't this country become the country of healthy printing? Yeah? When you have an IKEA catalog 30 years ago, it had 90 dangerous chemicals in it which don't allow composting or burning in a fireplace. Yeah? Uh, today it's 50 because we minimized, we reduced, avoided thanks to occupational health legislation, to trade unions. But what was the difference whether you got shot 50 times or 90 times? Yeah? You only invested a lot of money and you're just a little less bad. Yeah? It doesn't really help you. But you can now make paper which is perfectly compostable. Yeah? And this, this makes a different thing. Here you see it in Austria, we did this jointly in Austria with a company which shows how this can be done. Austria is world champion in paper recycling. Already 9 out of 10 newspapers and 9 out of 10 cardboard boxes are made from recycled paper. Which is great because it shows how many people here are ready to do something to protect the environment. What most people don't know, however, is that even in the recycling process, lots of resources are still lost. Because only the pulp can really be recycled, which is about 60% of the total volume. Up to 40%, mainly ink and filler material, is separated from the pulp and is left over after the recycling process as more or less poisonous sludge. This poses the question whether it's really environmentally friendly when, of any product, only 60% is really suited to recycling. Since the beginning of the industrial age, we produce things which end their lifespan on a rubbish dump. The motto is, take, make, waste. But if more and more people use more and more products, then eventually we will run out of the raw materials needed to make new products. Already today, we consume more resources each year than the Earth can regenerate. So simply consume less? Unfortunately, no. In that way, we can at the most delay the depletion of our resources, not prevent it. We would then only be driving more slowly, but still in the wrong direction. It's about taking the right turn, because damaging behavior patterns do not become positive or useful if one does them less. But that is exactly what the issue is today, to design products so that they are useful and not merely less damaging. The most beautiful examples of this are provided by nature. A cherry tree produces endless blossoms. Once the cherry blossom season is over, the petals fall to the ground, where they do not become rubbish heaps but flow back as nutriment into the cycle of nature. All resources remain intact and can be used again and again. The cradle-to-cradle -cradle design principle works exactly the same way. The goal is to lead more and more materials into cycles. For this, products must be conceived from the start in such a way that, at the end of their life cycles, they can flow back into biological or technical cycles. In the meantime, many products have been reinvented specifically for this. From televisions to sofa covers and carpets, to shampoo, t-shirts and toilet paper. New to this circle are cradle-to-cradle -cradle printing products, for which all constituent materials have been examined for environmental or health risk factors and, if necessary, replaced. And now, paper, inks and additional materials are manufactured so that complete recycling is finally possible. Now, not just the pulp can return to the cycle, in the future, even the sewage sludge may be used as fertilizer or for humus generation. And if this humus does not go straight onto a farmer's field, then maybe the trees will grow from it, which will then provide pulp for new paper. Cradle-to-cradle -cradle printing products could even be directly composted, and when burnt, the ash is good for the vegetable garden. With Cradle to Cradle, we can close the cycle. And now, with Googler, you too can print as nature would print. So this is about innovation. Why don't you say, hey, in 2020, all our paper products will be compostable. Just as a goal, you go there to invite people. Just to, if you make it a little less bad, it doesn't help you. And now what do people now? They take the toxic sludges from paper recycling, they put it in fillers and cardboards and call it circle economy. How nice, yeah? They put toxic fly ashes into bricks and they call it circle economy. How sick, yeah? So this is why we need to start from scratch differently. The first product which we ever did was the edible fabric, yeah? 
So you can choose positively all ingredients. When you make a piece of furniture, the pieces you cut off from, from, from the fabric are so toxic that you need to burn them in hazardous waste incineration. Yeah, but you sit on it, you sit next to a beautiful lady, for example, you get really nervous about it, yeah, and then you actually eat the fabric. So you need to choose all the chemicals for that. Yeah? You need to be designed for the purpose in that. And this is, it makes it 20% cheaper, and you can make the stuff in Switzerland even because you're not competing with slave labor from somewhere else. What do people here? They now are printing their sustainability reports in China <laughs> with 90 dangerous chemicals again, and then we do circle economy here. And we talk about the Chinese are banning yeah, a toxic waste being exported into China. <laughs> when they send us a toxic paper cardboard yeah, and paper, and we do high-tech recycling of it. Yeah. That's a waste which we get from the beginning. Yeah. How funny. So, so we can make the first plaque in human history designed for skin contact, for underwear, just eight years ago. The first shoe soles designed to, for the biosphere. Tires now last twice as long. About 20% of the microparticles in oceans are tire dust now. Yeah? So we optimized the wrong thing. 470 different chemicals in tires, and now we find them as microplastic in the oceans. Compostable t-shirts, you find the Puma InCycle collection. Look at the internet. You will see 128 products on the market for that. So, because we are here with Salong's Aveda, an Austrian uh, 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 hair salon um, person, like you could see it here <laughs> as well, he founded Aveda, where you positively divide, define what's in there. We have cleaning products around it. The Technosphere is interesting. We started in 2010, the same year when I was here. I was in, Sh in, in Shanghai at the World Expo, and I started with Good Baby. Good Baby in makes more baby things than their society, babies on this planet. We are starting to understand that we are making an enormous claim on the Earth's natural resources. Imagine what will happen when the rapidly growing world population lives up to the insatiable trend towards consumerism. The cradle-to-cradle -cradle philosophy shows that we don't have to choose between economical and ecological prosperity. If we design products more intelligently and use materials more effectively, both business and nature can thrive and grow. Cradle-to-cradle -cradle is all about following nature's design principles. Waste equals food, keeping all materials in continuous cycles, stimulating the use of renewable energy, and celebrating diversity. By learning from nature's design principles, eco-effective design conceives industrial systems that emulate the healthy abundance of nature. In addition to functionality and beauty, cradle-to-cradle -cradle products need to be designed for either the biological or technical cycle. After the products useful life, materials are carefully disassembled and become nutrients for new products through biodegradation or recycling. Such a system modeled on the world's riches, can solve rather than just manage the problems industry currently creates. Good Baby is the largest supplier of children's strollers in the world. Every three seconds, a new stroller comes off the production line. And all the while, the company continues its pursuit for innovation. Good Baby's R&D department works closely with four overseas R&D centers around the globe. Over the last 20 years, Good Baby has complied with many international standards and are now stepping to the forefront by embracing the cradle-to-cradle -cradle philosophy and making it a part of their core business. And there are very important reasons to do so, especially since juvenile products have a relatively short lifespan. Babies are the most vulnerable human beings. Good Baby wants to make sure that our children grow up in a safe and healthy environment and are ensuring this by carefully selecting 100% safe materials for each Good Baby product. Recycling materials effectively after the product's useful life will improve the living environment for generations to come. In September 2010, Good Baby started cooperating with IPEA and its founder Michael Braungart, who initiated the cradle-to-cradle -cradle concept together with... So you can see it in the internet and, and because of time I want, I want to, you can look it up. The funny thing is to find that video on the Good Baby homepage uh, and you find down at the homepage it says cradle to cradle is an old Chinese philosophy. Yeah. So they adopted it already, isn't it nice? So, so definitely it sure, they aren't used to think in nutrients. Yeah. When you're invited for dinner in China people expect you to stay in the countryside till today yeah, that you stay till you use the toilet because it's unfriendly to leave and to take nutrients with you because you're invited for dinner, not for stealing nutrients. Yeah. 
yeah, it's a different mindset. And this is how, yeah, we never gave anything back to our farmers. We always stole materials. We never gave anything back to them, yeah. And sure, you find these old terms in that it's waste equals food. How stupid. It's food equals food, yeah, because it says food. Maybe McDonald's, it's, it's food equals waste or whatever, but that's a different story. Yeah. So I'm talking about making things differently, yeah, making making things which are beneficial. These carpets can clean the air. They're not just less toxic. They're good. Yeah. They absorb fine dust. Why should I use my lung to clean the air when a carpet can do so? So we, we have shares in the market now for these companies, for example, which are market leaders in the world. We are no longer selling the chair. We are selling 10 years of healthy sitting insurance. Yeah, how nice to generate local and regional industry here because you're providing a service instead of provide selling the stuff. There are a lot of building materials. There are now 11,000 cradle to cradle products on the market. Yeah, and we can make buildings which support life, buildings like trees, buildings which clean the air, buildings which support the other species. Yeah, and you can see this is a building in the Netherlands in Venlo where the indoor air quality is much better than outside air. Why don't we say from today all our public buildings will be designed that indoor air quality is better than outside air. This would be an innovation engine for that, isn't it? And you can smell it and you can see this with the absentee rate, which is amazingly low because the air quality is so high in that. We can make areas grow where we get more agricultural land because we can use the walls of the building as well for growing raspberries, strawberries, etc. in that. So we can be good for the space in that. We can use buildings as material banks. It's a big, uh, big pr uh, concept because why should we store the metal somewhere in a storage place when a building can store it? Uh, we can we need material passports. This is why it's so key that we work with, with ThinkStep here because we definitely need to define how to make reversible building constructions, how to do the data management, how to do the software for that. Yeah. And sure, we need business models and we need changes in that. Yeah. Good. No. Can can. Good. I want to show you. In, we could do far more things when, when we just see in a digital world. It's not a circle. It's a space. Today it's a washing machine. Tomorrow it's a carpet. Next time it's a building material. It's a space. It's a sphere. Not always taking things back. Yeah. So you can see this here with with mask. Maersk Line will implement the most comprehensive cradle-to-cradle -cradle passport ever seen for the new giant triple E ships. The cradle-to-cradle -cradle passport will identify each and every nut and bolt of the giant 60,000 ton ships, making vastly improved recycling possible for most materials as well as safe disposal for the rest. The materials of the ships will all be marked and numbered separating high and low grade steel, copper wiring, hazardous materials and waste. Based on the sorting, it will be possible to reuse nearly all materials for new ships, making dangerous and polluting scrapping a thing of the past. Maersk is the world's largest logistic company having more than 500 own container ships, about 500 leasing container ships. And in 2020, not one of the new ships will have one gram of waste anymore. So we can do this, but why don't you want to partner with them? Yeah. But we are at the beginning. <coughs> People are buying solar panels. <laughs> can you imagine? Nobody needs a solar panel. People need to harvest photons. So why do you buy a solar panel? Yeah, it's Chinese hazardous waste. Yeah, you could make solar panels in this country if you would sell the performance of it. Yeah. We analyzed the European solar panel. It has 93% of its capacity after 19 years. The, Europe, yeah, the Chinese solar panel loses more than half of the capacity in the first five years. Yeah. Even it's 40% cheaper at the beginning. Of for, 20, for 20 years, the performance of the European solar panel is much higher yeah, per, per kilowatt hour. Yeah. So why do we buy solar panels and we do high-tech recycling for Chinese hazardous waste? That doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, why do we buy robots? You don't need a robot. You need welding points. Yeah? 
So why don't you buy 100 million welding points? This is the factory of the future of BMW and they buy robots, yeah? So you see, you're at the very beginning, but it's a mindset which needs to be different with that. It's not about avoiding, minimizing, reducing. We need to come up with a positive goal. Let's agree in 2100 the same carbon dioxide in the atmosphere concentration will be exactly what we had in 1900. Then my young students would have a positive uh, idea how to deal with the future. If I tell them to be 10% less evil, they go away. Because this selfie generation wants to be proud of what they're doing. They don't want to be a little less bad. Yeah? They want to be good. So why don't we make trees which support life? Yeah, why don't we yeah, trees which absorb carbon dioxide? We can absorb the moisture from the air and we can make methanol for fuel cells out of it. Yeah? So we can make trees which actively get the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. We can make buildings which generate soil and nutrients. I did this in, in Venice two years ago at the Biennale in that to show how a building can be done uh, which really supports life. There's a conference in two weeks and uh, if anybody has friends in Europe, uh, whatever, just come by because it's amazing what's going on. When young selfie generation wants to be proud of what they're doing for them, it's more important to be accepted in a social network yeah, than uh, to earn as much money. Yeah. So if you're just making waste, you're an idiot. Yeah. Do you want to be stupid? Yeah. So it's enough. Self-esteem is better than ethics because people want to be proud of what they're doing. So take the diapers, for example, yeah, which I talked. If you just change the super absorber, of the diapers in, in, in that. Then you can grow in Israel or in Tunisia with one baby, yeah, 150 trees, yeah, because it's raining there, yeah, but the rain disappears because there's no place where it can stay in the soil, yeah, because there's no soil. We can take the plastic and use it again, or we can make it compostable. Yeah, so why don't you start and say, hey, we, make the, the place of we are the place of healthy diapers. Yeah. New Zealand. That would make a difference. Yeah? If you go along the beaches in Indonesia, the third most thing, uh, thing plastic you find are used diapers. Yeah? Because the middle class is now buying diapers from Procter & Gamble and they just yeah, dump them. Yeah? But it's a wrong material just to leave them behind. Yeah? So they need to be designed for that purpose. So this is why it's a cradle-to-cradle -cradle economy, not circular, not sustainable. That was important from the past because we learned it out of the blame and shame we learned the problems but now it's time for a positive agenda to look at somebody and say hey young man nice that you're here not could be 10 percent less evil and sure I, i'm sorry i could give, give you a much better speech but i couldn't trust you yeah so <laughs> uh, but take this uh, the message thank you that you're here welcome